activity are undertaken that in many instances are already illegal and need to be pursued, prosecuted and brought to justice, not just sort of trying to create, in many ways with this, an issue out of something that isn't the main issue. Because most of the content the government will be aiming to filter is not the type of content that children are getting into trouble with today or that are causing families enormous grief. A lot of it's horrific content, um, but it's content in many instances that is already illegal, is already actively hunted by police. More effort should be going into doing that than, of course, trying to theoretically block it when uh, those who are far more technically able than I will explain, uh, I'm sure, when people will find ways quite easily, as they already do, through file sharing programs and other ways to share this type of horrific material and child porn and so on online anyway. And the filter will make not one job of difference to the way that they share that information. Um, last, last, last one there, thanks much. Very quick, I know I'm asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sure. Uh, I've been one of these meetings before and um, uh, what I've noticed in the terms of one of them is just none of the people. Uh, I think, personally, I don't want your opinion on this, we should remove stop from there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm against the it, but uh, I think uh, it would make more people come and have a, a debate filled with people with the, for the filter, and people that are against the filter, and then give people who are against the filter a chance to the other people, and have people like you. The big, uh, the big filter debate. Um, look at uh, absolutely in terms of you've got to you've got to at least keep the issue at the forefront and maintain relevance of the issue. So what you do need in that sense is um, to apply every tactic. I've talked to a degree about the tactics of campaigning directly to politicians and trying to influence what we think and so on. But uh, in terms of uh, attracting more attention, both in the media and elsewhere, um, using debates and those sorts of things are, are all good. I think the, uh, I haven't run into too many people who are uh, passionately in favour of the filter, but uh, there are those who are. So uh, you know, using them in debate forums or anything else that can help to get people out is useful. But as I said at the beginning, I think you're. Uh, the strength of, uh, of being able to mobilise people in this debate uh, is not necessarily how many people you can get to turn up physically in the same room, it's how many people you can get to participate for a range of, uh, of new and different media that, uh, that can communicate the message. But don't, one, one rule for that, don't forget old-fashioned ways of communication as part of the campaign. Yes, yes, yes. Picking up the phone or even still sending snail mail letters has particular effect in politicians' offices um, that, uh, uh, that sometimes the particularly bulk systematic emails don't necessarily. Uh, it was the ETS debate, the, the miraculous thing about that was that the communication that kept coming through to us um, saying vote against this ETS and so on were not form letters, um, they weren't form emails, they were people who were listening to the radio or reading things on the web or in the newspapers who just got angry and rang up or wrote a letter or bashed on their keyboard but in every instance it was you know, a unique piece of communication and thousands of them were coming through into the office um, and that's, that resonates far more than getting a couple of thousand emails that all say the same thing where you just know that somebody's going to put their I still know that somebody's gone to an airport and they believe it, but in the end, sort of, you know, they've put their email address into a field on a website and clicked send, and that's been the you know, extent of their effort, um, as against just even writing two or three sentences in your own words and uh, clicking send or ringing up or whatever it works. Okay, do you want to, was there a question? Or? Yeah, there was, thank you. Yep. Um, question about the demographics of the Senate. Um, yep. You, you know a lot more about that than any of us. Are we likely to be more effective by lobbying your colleagues with appeals to kill the bill, or lobbying your colleagues or with suggestions for amendments that rip the guts out of it, while still giving them the ability to vote for it? So, Conrad, I call the Good question. Very good question. Good question on tactics. Um, I. I think on this, 
better to better to be sticking to the kill bill and lobbying with alternatives or um, alternative policies that the government could pursue in these areas. So that Abbott or whoever can come out and say, we're voting against this, but instead we call on the government to uh, uh, to put more police on the beat, not, not on the beat, but you know, put more police behind the screens um, to uh, toughen up the uh, the laws and penalties to uh, introduce you know, to to re-offer voluntary filtering to uh, free the families to you know, whatever the alternatives are to arm us with that, but to make it a very very clear no vote. The risk of an amendment sort of halfway is that it, the message will get a bit too diluted and complicated, and in the end, um, you might not get your amendments up, but then you might feel obliged to say, well, we've gotten so far down the path of supporting the principle of it that we actually have to see it through. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. Apologies that I'm not going to hear other speakers, but um, um, feel free to get in touch. You're, you're all computer literate. You can find my office. <laughs>